we all kind of adjusted how we were approaching it and what we needed to do and, and how we could maximize who we were. And, and the biggest thing I've taken um, that I've seen him make strides in is, is ball security, eliminating negative plays, and just overall, um, you know, how he carries himself in the building, the preparation, you know, the leadership qualities. I mean, it's, it's a work in progress and will be, but he, he's stepped up in all those areas. You've said before about using this whole year as kind of a time to see him progress, but do you have benchmarks within that? Like, I want to see this by week four or this by week eight. I, I don't set it as, as games, just um, improvement. You know, each week I, I like to see things that if we made a mistake one week, we don't make it again and, and um, things of that nature. And he continues on, on a steady climb, even against some very good teams. And there will be some bumps in the road. We know that. But uh, he's putting in the work, and I think it's showing on Sundays. How much of his growth and development on him, him doing it on his own, and you guys teaching him and working with him? Uh, it's, it's a lot on his own. I mean, in this league, you know, it's sink or swim when it comes to preparation. We can have him as much as, as we have him, but um, to separate yourself, it's, it's what you do when you're not here, and, and he's definitely taking that to heart. In what specific ways do you think he's a better quarterback now than he was nine weeks ago? Once again, I, I think collectively as an offense, we're better because um, we're understanding who we are and, and try to maximize our personnel. But he's the game slowed down for him a bit. I think he's getting through his progressions uh, better. I think he's protecting the football. And, and then once again, we were taking a ton of negative plays that we probably didn't need to because we were trying to do too much. Uh, and and that's you you appreciate that. And there's a fine line we walk because he has that ability. But he's he's um, doing a nice job of knowing when the party's over and getting rid of the ball. You talk a lot about you figuring this game out at, at this level. How much of what you wanted to do initially have you not? Been? Uh, it's it's been a work in progress, but um, all I want to do is win games, and so whatever we have to do to do that is what we're going to do. Um, you know, w the red zone struggles are what they are, and, and that's something I have to continue to look at, and us as an offense have to get better at. But um, as far as who we want to be, I just want to be the best offense that this group can be, and, and win as many games as we can. What are some of the obstacles that you're going to be facing from uh, Tampa's D? A uh, great front, you know, top two or three in the league, uh, rush defense, um, very disruptive up front. Coach Bowles does a tremendous job uh, with his pressures and, and timing them up and um, giving a bunch of different looks, particularly for a young quarterback. There's guys coming from all, all over the place. They play very hard. They're a very physical group, and, and it's going to be a huge challenge. You talked about uh – I know we've asked a lot about Andy Isabella and his growth and everything. When it comes to those receivers, Andy and, and Keyshawn, uh, and, and they're obviously getting some playing time now, do you get to a point in the season where you're like, okay, where we are as a team and, and where the record might be, we're just going to throw them in to get that game experience that they wouldn't necessarily get in practice? Or is it is it strictly going to be what they show you in practice? It's, it's merit-based, yeah, if they weren't up to the task or hadn't improved or we didn't think they could get the job done, we're not going to put him out there with our first pick of the draft quarterback and put him in uh, at a disadvantage. So, no, it, it's based on how hard they've worked and how they developed, and um, they're, they're coming on. You touched on Kyler's work ethic, and after the game, someone was asking about the mini buy, and he didn't even like register that he had some days off. He, he said, I just want to win. When did you realize that he was in it like that and willing to get better on his own? Uh, I heard good things. Um, obviously, wasn't able to coach him in college, but talking to his high school coaches and college coaches, um, you know, I remember talking to Baker about him as well. That I mean, very um, high football IQ and, and works at it, and you can see it. And I, I think it's the first time in his life he's ever been able to just concentrate on football and focus on football. And this is his job full time, and, and he's taking that to heart. And um, he asks all the right questions. He retains information. He, he processes it very well. And I think you're going to continue to just see that grow as, as he figures this deal out. In a perfect world, where can Hassan Reddick kind of carve his niche? That it's changed a lot. It has. It has. I think that's that's up to for him to decide with how he performs on the field. Um, very talented, you know, has made a bunch of plays, and, and he's been moved around a bunch in different schemes so far in his, his young career. Um, but athleticism is there. He shows up. He flashes. He makes plays, and so we'll we'll keep working. What more do you need to see from David to make to know he's ready? Just full speed uh, cuts and comfort level, and um, I think we're close. So hopefully we see what we want this week, and we can get him back out there. 
Tyler, which ways specifically have you seen him improve as far as leadership and body language and that kind of off the field stuff? Just it, as a young player coming in and being asked to be the leader of this entire organization, the face of the franchise, that's that's a tall task. And he's kind of introverted, as you've seen by nature, but he, he's starting to understand um, you got to get out of your comfort zone to be that guy. And, and um, I think his teammates are starting to understand what he's about. He's about winning, and he's about competing at the highest level. And so that's been a good mix for those guys to see what he's about and then him get around them and get comfortable with them and our staff. And, and I think that's just grown as the season's gone on. Your thoughts on Jameis Winston? I, he played his tail off last week. Um, you know, they're throwing it as good as anybody, scoring a ton of points. And he's always been a great competitor and a great leader. And um, so I think he's having a good year. All, all, the different, sorry, all the different running backs have had pretty good yards per carry and success. Do you think any of that is scheme related where you, you spread teams out at the lighter box and it does give those guys more room to run? Coach Kugler's done a tremendous job of, of week in and week out coming up with good running game plans, and those guys are, are running the ball well. And, and then I, th I think having a quarterback that is that threat to pull at any time has definitely helped that take some some pressure off those guys. Justin, go ahead, Kat. Thanks. What have you seen out of Mason Cole in the last game and just the practice before? Very athletic, uh, a guy who may be the most valuable lineman we have because of his versatility. I mean, he can play center, can play guard, could play tackle in an emergency situation, but very athletic on that second level, can get off the ball, can run. Uh, and you, you can tell he got a bunch of reps last year, and, and you know we didn't skip a beat sliding him in there. Is there any scenario, uh, even when Justin Murray gets healthy, that you would consider keeping Pew at right tackle and keeping Cole in the lineup? We're going to put the best five out there. So when he comes back, that's a decision that we'll all talk about and, and figure out. Just doesn't, doesn't seem, I mean, Pew doesn't seem to really enjoy the switch. He's doing it, obviously, but he's not a fan of it. Did, did, did he let you know that? <laughs> no, he did not let me know that, but I appreciate you pointing that out. <laughs> well, wait, can you tell what Ch Chandler Jones can have the world on his string right now the way he's been playing? Can you tell when he's going to have a big game just from watching him re react, practice, goof around? The expectation is he has a big game every week with, with his preparation, his work ethic. I, I think we all expect it because of how hard he works and how he carries himself and how he prepares. And um, He brings a lot of juice to that locker room. He's the same guy day in, day out, positive approach to the game. And, and that's why you know coaches and teammates love him. He knows more teams keying on him? No question. He's definitely um, garnering more attention, and that's tough. Sending backs that way, sliding protections that way, but he continues to fight, and uh, the production uh, continues to show up. How does, he, how does he do it? How does he get to the quarterback? Because he doesn't really have a signature move. He's, he's, he's got a bunch of different moves. If you asked him, he like names them off. He had one sack against New York called Snapchat. So <laughs> you have to ask him. After they happen? I don't know. I, I apparently, after. <laughs> After. Did you ask him what? what no, I just, I did not. I don't want. I, I don't want to know. Has he told you about barbecue chicken? He's been saying that one a lot. I haven't heard that one. <laughs> no, but he's he's a character and he, he makes it fun to be around him.